Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Pool Dog Championship Arena in Las Vegas for continuing coverage of the APA World Pool Championships. This afternoon we have the Nine Ball World Championship. I'm your host, Jason Bowman, joined by the striking Viking, the, <laughs> the lovely striking Viking, Ava <laughs> Matai Lawrence. Ava, how are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm better now. That's a good look for you. That's a good look for you. I told you I'd have my <laughs> costume. All right, enough of that. Happy Halloween. Yeah, absolutely. Almost. So what a better way to celebrate Halloween, folks, than with this nine ball championship, $30,000 on the line. And we've got two teams here that have survived to the final day. First up from San Antonio, Texas, we got the team of Rick's Mo Betta team and their opponents out of Hazelhurst, Georgia, Shorties Billiards 9. And they are itching to play on the floor. Let's go through some quick ground rules of the match. Of course, APA rules apply in the match. Teams are made up of a combination of male and female players with up to eight players on a roster. Five will play in a match. There is the handicap limit of 23, meaning the skill levels of the five players that play cannot exceed 23. Players may be coached once per game. A pocketed ball is good for one point. A pocketed nine ball is good for two points. And players race to their individual ball count uh, for team match points that are awarded based on the outcome of the match. So, right. whew, that's a lot. Yeah, Seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, but those are the rules, folks, and we, again, we'll kind of walk you through it as we go here this afternoon. Again, should be a great match, $30,000 on the line. First matchup, we've got Richard Robles Jr. for Rick's Mo Betta team, and his opponent's going to be Brian Hunter out of Shorty's Billiards. Richard is a skill level four. Brian is also a skill level four, which means we got a 31-31 race, Ava. We do, and, uh, you know, they've been playing the whole tournament i mean you think about how many matches i believe it was eight matches if you stayed on the winner's side i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe it was eight matches if you end up on the loser's side chances are there were you know nine depending on if you get a buy or something but i mean these guys have been fighting hard to get here all week all right we're getting ready to get it on here folks brian hunter will have the break here Solid break there, too. Managed to make the two ball on the break, but came up short on getting a shot on the one, so he's going to be kicking. And as you can tell, Brian does have a kind of a helper um, bridge there. Brian has one arm, which means that um, he's got some help getting on a br uh, bridged. Very much legal, obviously, in APA, no problem. They're both skill level four. A nice little defensive shot there. Did not snooker him, but at least he didn't leave it shot for Richard. That was a little typo there. Brian is a skill level four. Yeah, I saw that. As is Richard. And that's an even better defensive shot. Kind of had a two-way shot, but I'm sure he's glad that didn't go in since he didn't get a shot on the three ball. It looks like he's going to have to kick. Yeah, one cushion just above the side pocket. Wow. Oh, not only did he hit it, but nice kick. <laughs> well done. Again, Brian is a member of Shorty's Billiards 9. They are out of Hazelhurst, Georgia. And their opponents, Rick's Mo Betta team out of San Antonio, Texas. Definitely has a shot at the three, but does he have a way to pocket the three other than shooting a bank? I don't even know for sure if that combination 3-4 is available. Yeah, they're going to call a timeout right off the bat here. Final day of the World Pool Championships here in Las Vegas. It's been quite a journey, Ava. It has. I mean, first the eight ball which is obviously a long tournament with almost, what, 1,100 teams we had? Yep. The Scorpions out of Joliet, Illinois, took home 50000 It was said a 5, really 000, good 50, match. 50000 Yeah, $50,000. And uh, not too shabby for an amateur event, I have to say. <laughs> and it's not. 30000 on the line here. Timeout is over. Brian is ready. I think he's going to go ahead and shoot a defensive shot with a kind of a bank as a possibility avoided the double kiss but where's that three gonna oh that did oh that turned out okay 
Brings Richard Robles Jr. back to the table. Rick's Mo Betta team has Richard Robles Sr., Richard Robles Jr., and Naomi Robles, who is the newest member of the family, I understand. Who's also the captain, by the way. Yes, skill level three is the captain. I like that. People think that you need to have a seven or a nine to be the captain. There's no such thing. Naomi just said, I want to build my team, and she put together what she needed. Obviously, she did a good job, and they're here now playing for the $30,000. All right, two rail kick. That's going to be a dead ball there. The seven went in the pocket. So ball in hand here for Richard. That was a big, big deal, especially the way the balls are. If he can draw the cue ball back for the four ball or roll it up if he plays it in the side. Oh, we're going to get another timeout here. Rick's Mo Better team. They play out of San Antonio, out of pockets of San Antonio. Been playing together for three years. They wanted to give a shout out to all their family and friends and supporters. Again, we are here at Pool Dog Championship Arena. Final day of competition in the APA World Championships. Mm, let go of the cue ball a little bit there. Wanted to play that either in the side or a little bit more straight on. But as long as he can pocket this ball here fairly softly and come, in, come out anywhere in here, he's going to be in good shape. Nice shot. Nice shot just... Did he make it? No, he did not. This is a pretty big ball in hand here. Looks like the 6-9 combination is available for, for Brian. So he's going to have ball in hand on the 5. Problem there for Brian. And three more points for Brian. <laughs> Total of 5 2 at the end of the first rack. All right. Well, we got a minute. Let's hear a word from our friends at pooldog.com. Back for our second rack in this first match of the nine ball championship. Brian Hunter at the table. Well, he has a solid break, but that time cue ball found its way straight into the side pocket. So ball in hand for Richard. He's going to have to navigate a way to get to the two ball clear on the other side of the table. Both are open, both the one and the two. And he is the draw this. Avoid the five and the three. Oh, boy. Well, that worked out okay. Not an easy shot on the two, but definitely a makeable shot. I want to give a shout-out to our friends at PoolDog.com. They are the official presenting sponsor of all of our coverage of this year's World Pool Championships. Appreciate their support. And as you prepare for the holiday season, if you're buying billiard accessories, would encourage you to visit PoolDog.com. 
Great selection of inventory at great price. How about that bank? <laughs> A nice shot. And the shot on the three in the side pocket. Got to let the cue ball go a little bit, but four ball being where it is should be makeable in the side after this. It's just kind of a speed shot, depending on if he hits the seven. That'll work. It's not where he wanted to be, but he can cut that into the side pocket. Nicely done. Yeah, well done. Cue ball coming up all around the table. Well played. No real issues here. This is about speed control on the cue ball. He's got an actual position for the six if he plays the correct speed. Main issue here is getting from the seven to the nine, being that the nine is on the rail like that. All right, little too far or a little too short. Going to have to have a pretty severe cut here on the six ball in the side, and the cue ball's going way down table. Oh, he went for the bank. Well, I guess after that last bank he made, he's got it some yeah. confidence. I, and it's real impressive how he's mastered that bridge that he's using. I mean, it's that's like not fantastic. even, yeah, not even an issue. Oh, that's Watch a scary out. one. Yeah. Cue ball hangs on in that corner there. Got his point, but boy, does he have a tall order here on the seven. Just play defense. If it stops before the side, it's a good one. Oh, it did not. It, that last little roll brought it out to just enough to where he can make it in the side pocket now and come out for the nine. As you see, Richard leads nine to four. Again, each ball pocketed worth one point. The nine ball when pocketed worth two points. First player to get to 31 points will win this first match. Timeout here. And it's obviously a big deal to win the match. Not only do you get more points, but you also have the wins matter in case it were yeah. to be a 50-50 tie, then it goes to the one the team that won three out of the five. But even if you lose the match, it's a big difference if you lose 12-8 or if you lose, you know, 18-2. Sure. So you can pick up points for your team even if you don't manage to win the match. But yeah, got to keep it close. You bet. Brian could not pocket that seven in the side. Chance here for Richard to cut into the lead. Speaking of cutting, it's a thin cut here, Jason. Chop, the, chop. Yeah, the good thing is that he should be able to get position. If he cuts this in, he doesn't cut it in too firm. Or is he going to go around the table? That's going the wrong direction. Well, he got on the nine, but no good. We'll see here if Brian's just going to tap this in or if he's going to try to go around and get a better position for the nine. Chance to extend the lead here if he can run out this rack with three more points. Seven ball goes. Nice shot. Very nice. Nice shot. Big two points there. And the break. And he does have a great break. Last time he scratched, but if he can control that cue ball, Brian does have a powerful break. Brian is, and his teammates out of Hazelhurst, Georgia, where they play out of Shorty's Billiards. They've been playing together for a couple of years now. 
So they've done a lot of nail biting and you had bet. some thrilling <laughs> matches here at the World Championships, as I'm sure any team that makes it here to the final day has, has gone through some adversity. They wanted to say hello to their family and friends cheering back home with a special shout-out to Avian Thomas. Avian? I'm not sure if I'm spelling there. Hmm. I'm sure somebody will correct you. Yeah. We'll have to pay attention to the stream, see if somebody can tell us if you messed that up. Glad it's you and not me. There's that break. Ball down and a shot at the one, but it's jacked up over the four ball. That makes it way tougher. Seven ball is missing, so it's a pretty big shot here considering where the balls are. Sometimes you kind of know that, it, well, okay, if I miss it. Oh, he's not jacked up over it. See him shooting off the rail there. I'm going to see another timeout here. For Shorty's Billiards. I have a feeling that's Roderick Rents, the skill level 9 on their team, but... Not necessarily. A lot, a lot of times a nine has a hard time communicating what they want a four to do. So sometimes there's a five or a six or even a four on the team that will go up and give the time out. Right. You know, sometimes the nines go, just hit this with a little low <laughs> right, spin it around four <laughs> rails right between these balls and you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you have a two or a three or a four going, okay. What? <laughs> you want me to What? I see that a lot where people have different people on the team that they favor as as their, you know, timeout guy, yeah. as their coach. And you can change it around. Well, that's a tough shot there. See what Richard can do here. Love to pick up a few points for their side. Good play. Oh, I thought it was going to go mm -hmm. off the four. That was the plan, and instead he hung it up. And Richard is, I mean, O'Brien's back in action here, Jason. Chance to s extend that lead even further. Again, this is a race to 31. He's already at 13 points. Make that 14. Watch look out. Look out. Watch look out. out. Oh, got away with it. Still at 14 points. <laughs> <laughs> and shooting on the two ball. Nicely, Nicely done there. Done. Pool Dog Arena here filling in nicely. The spectators on this beautiful Saturday here in Las Vegas. Lots of folks running around in costumes in the halls and things. Richard keeps coming in on tricky situation. And, ooh, he solved that one, didn't he, Jason? Nice and shot. He did. Long shot on this four. All he has to do is make it. The five, six should be, ooh, I was going to say the five, six should be automatic, but the angle he has on this five, holding it for the six in the side is going to be, um, difficult all right that'll work I like it Richard doesn't take much time does he He just goes down where's my next ball great and now the beauty of this shot obviously is all you have to do is make the eight and the cue ball is going to feed right down for the nine ball just keep your head down watch out mm, mm, mm. oh wow Pocketed that eight ball, but 
he hit that with too much center. In other words, if you hit that with a little bit of follow, you don't have to put any side English on it. A little bit of follow, it would have brought it down towards the nine more. But striking the cue ball in the middle there, he kind of went straight across and a little too firm. So automatic, almost automatic two points here for Brian. That eight will be a dead ball. Brian will get two more points here. He's now at 17 points. Needs 14 more. The referee the there preparing the rack. Just tuning in, this is the championship round of the APA Nine Ball World Championship here in Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. Scratch there. That's the second time he scratched off the break. Again, nothing real easy other than obviously making the one ball here for Richard, but he's going to have to make a decision. Uh, what, 2-9, bring it down, go into the two, play the two in the opposite corner. I mean, sometimes you get ball in hand and they're just laying there easy for you. He's decided to go for the nine ball, which is great, but it's still only three points for him here as opposed to being able to run a few balls. Oh, that help with the two. Got him four points. Richard now at nine. After that early nine ball. The score is now 12 to 17. Short is the Brian still leads 17 to 12. Richard will have the break. That nine ball moving up in that corner, but yeah, but he's going to be drop. giving up the table. Not much to look at here for Brian. There's no bank. There's no possibility of making this one ball. So he's going to be looking at a defensive shot, I would think. And how about that? That, that nice. cue ball helped out nicely, didn't it? Very nice. I don't know if that's what he was planning to do, but there was a lot of traffic right there. So his odds were that he might be able to. It was like 50-50 if he was going to be able to get a snooker out of that. And not much to go here. I mean, I wonder if he can come around here and go just below this four ball. It's about the only shot I can see on the table right now. The fact that he is frozen on the five blocks every other option on the table. Nope. Ball in hand to Brian. Brian ought to be able to secure three points here being where the balls are. You know, when you're playing a match like this, Jason, sometimes it just feels like every time you get to the table, you have a tough shot. Your opponent seems to be getting the easy shots when they get right. to the table. So, you know, you just got to take advantage because the tide tends to turn somewhere around halfway through the match. So when it's your turn to capitalize, you're just going to have to jump on it. Brian ended up with just enough of an angle to come out for the four. 
It's going to help him to make the four ball an awful lot easier than if he was straight in. It's a good shot there. And then five ball, all he has to do is make the five and avoid the natural position is coming this way. So you got to avoid this eight ball. That's the only thing he has to worry about if he makes the ball. Oh, he put a little bit of low on it that brought it in sooner. Tougher to get on the seven, but he is pocketing the balls that are available. He's got a shot at the six. He might be able to get around the table here if he can avoid hitting that eight ball and get up perfectly on the seven. Looks like we're going to see another timeout here. Again, there is one timeout per team per rack. So we have Coach Rod coming back up again, trying to tell him here, best way to get on the seven he knows that if he can get on that seven it should be five points for Brian here in addition to what he's just pocketed because of where the eight is in the nine so we're just going to have a little discussion here telling him how to hit the ball where to hit it Oh, it came below it. Nicely, nicely done. All right, just a solid tap in here on the seven, and he's going to have the eight, nine right there, Jason. Seven in the corner there for Brian. And now shooting on the eight. Most people would hate being on the rail here, but I think that, especially if Brian does play, let's say, on a nine-foot table. Oh, did not like that position. On a nine-foot table, then he's going to be very, very um, comfortable playing off the rail, especially being able to shoot one-handed like that. I admire it. I mean, a lot of the players out there on tour, they work on their one-handed. They play match-up and do all that. And... Um, Brian sure does a good job. He got away with another one there. I could just as easily had en ended up straight in for Richard, but see if Richard can make this bank. I would think he's trying to bank this in the side pocket. Oh, he went Took to it cut all the way it. Down, but he wow, missed. and look at this too on top of it. Things are just going Brian's way right now. And in addition, Brian does take advantage. So this would be two big points. Yeah, He needs bet. only six at this point in the match. Get a third of those right here if he makes this nine ball. The beauty of shooting the bank in that situation he was in is that you could end up with a defensive shot if you missed. Cutting it down and you miss it, even if he wouldn't have scratched, is going to leave the nine ball near the pocket. So all Brian can do is take advantage. Brian needs just four more points. He's going to have the break, chance to pick up one or two more. Over 1.1 million paid out here over the last 10 days or so in Las Vegas. You know, we talk a lot about how people, different people deal with the pressure of this match right here, being on the, on the streaming match. Yeah. The lights, the whole crowd watching you as opposed to just your team maybe out in the, uh, in the arena. Everybody at home is watching. Um, it's pretty intimidating, but 
so far everybody deals with it differently so far these two are just getting up and getting the job done you don't see a lot of panic from being in this position so that's a big part of of this finals here that we have found in the last few years is the streaming does make it a little more nerve-wracking absolutely dry break there for brian hunter richard robles jr starting to get in the danger zone here ava needs to pick up some points yeah he needs to get a shot first i mean this game has its way of of making everybody mm. oh wow mm -mm -mm. it's got a way of kind of it's almost predestined at least that's what it feels like in the chair and uh yes there's been some mistakes on richard's part no question but things are just going brian's way the table is open if he misses maybe or after the break there's no real shot for richard he steps in with ball in hand and all of a sudden brian has the control of the match and can rack up three four or five points and um that's kind of the been the story of this match so far i think richard is ready for things to go his way here real soon pockets the one in the corner yeah the i believe the runner up here too ava's fifteen thousand, right that's not too shabby is it fifteen thousand so I think we got a graphic with that payout we'll show you in a few minutes. I noticed one of the commenters said, well, what about everybody but first place? Well, we, we pay out them pretty well, too, I, I can assure you. It's like we've said a lot before. You know, money, you end up spending that, that trophy. Yeah, you keep it forever. All right. All one right. more point needed for Brian after that. And again, four points right there, just kind of tap, tap, tap. And he's got this. Should be able to oh, overcut it a little bit. He jumped up on that the way I hadn't seen him do before. And Richard, even if he doesn't win this match, making some balls here is going to make a huge difference. Absolutely. Don't get frustrated at this point. First of all, the match is never over till it's over, but even getting some more points. Vital. Nice shot. Nice smooth. Oh. When it rains, it pours. He ended up where he's going to have to jack up over this nine. Well done. Watch yeah. out. Watch out. If he doesn't, yeah. If he doesn't get streaming, I was going to say it was automatic position if he managed to make it jacked up over that ball. And again, he's got natural angle to come down on the nine. Well done. Absolutely. Richard Robles Jr. finishes out that rack, picks up some very important points. Again, even if he can't make the full comeback, the, the point split is determined by how many points your opponent was able to get to. Right. Richard will have the break. And if he makes one more ball here, I believe it's going to be, even if he loses, it would be a 15-5, as opposed to where he was at was a 17-3, had Brian managed to make that five ball. Mm. Big difference. Makes a big difference. Got the nine there in the side, Ava. Another two points. That doesn't hurt. Absolutely. Richard chalking that cue up. Hoping for a couple more. Uh, nine on the snaps. Here we 
we go. Oh, he that had nine it moving. again. He it's it going. Moving. Oh, wow. But he managed to stay at the table, though. That was big. And a shot at the one. See, when I was talking about the tide turning yep. here, he might feel it's a little bit late, to, to, you know, considering that Brian only needs one ball to win this. But you know what? Brian is in the chair. Not much he can do about it. But big points for his team. Yes. That brought him one step up, too, in the uh, one point, more point distribution. Here. Yeah, yeah, one exactly. more point here, and he moves to the 14-6 split, worst-case scenario. Oh. Oh, I thought he could make that. Yeah, I did, too. Look at that, though. Look at <laughs> things all of a sudden going Richard's <laughs> way. He's got him corner hooked. So all Brian's going to be able to do here is kick this way at the two. That was a big break. Oh, nice shot. Good, really good job there. Left a tester. I believe that Richard can make this. He could just tap it in. It's a very makeable shot, obviously, and the three ball goes in the side. Oh, he went rail first. Look out, look out, look out. Oh, we got a window, Jason. But where is he going to go with it? That's a little steep to cut it into the side pocket. Yeah, they're going to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, it looked like it was going to be kind of a cakewalk here. And then all of a sudden, like we talked about earlier, things, the, the whole tide turned. And all the rolls have been going Richard's way here. And all of a sudden, we're in a 30-23 situation where it's very, make, you know, very possible for Richard to win from here. Especially if he, his luck continues. Oh, oh, oh how about the seven? Continue. That'll work. Another point there for Richard, up to 24. And Richard got away with another one. But he left a good bank opportunity. I believe this three ball does definitely go th past the six. He's got to watch out with the cue ball so it doesn't do one of these into the corner pocket. I think he should be okay from that unless he plays down on the cue ball and hits it low. Cue ball being where it is, Jason, makes it tougher to play a defensive shot here. Only as far as, you know, as far as con controlling the cue ball. He's talking about hitting the right side of it and having the cue ball come up here and head up towards this part of the table and Hopefully snooker him behind the nine or at least leave him long. Mostly just got to look out for the scratch there. All right, hit it great, but here it goes. Here's that scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ball in hand for Richard Robles. And it should be not a guaranteed two points, but at a skill level four, and he looks like he's got his nerves under control. The three and five should be not a lot of problem. The problem here is the six, considering where the eight is. Up to 25 points now. Which, again, significant because at worst now we're at a 13-7 split on points. Pockets the five in the corner. It's a nice draw. Not a lot of control on that draw, but it came backwards where he's got a chance of making the six. Uh, looks like he overcut it. No, it just slid yeah. right in. He'll take it. 
It's a good thing he's a shot maker because that cue ball is going all over the place. But you know what? As long as you make the ball, it does not matter. And we've got game, people. Ooh. He's good. <laughs> Makes this nine ball. We would be tied at 30. The next ball would win the match here, folks. And Richard wow. has the break. What a comeback. Wow. Brian looked like everything was going his way. He was just going to walk away with it. But all of a sudden, the pool gods kind of got involved and said it's Richard's turn, and he has lived up to the challenge here. Good job. And Hill needing, Hill. Yeah, needing one point, eh, but he's got the break. Or is it Hill Hill? We got the score on here. Should 30 be 30, to 28. Should be 30 to 30, I believe. Get that updated. We'll find out, yeah. And having the break here, needless to say, is... The advantage as long as he does not scratch. Mm -mm -mm. This is a juicy one, folks. See what he can do here. And. Oh, I thought he was going to make the nine. So did Richard. Wow. And he left this for Brian. Shot at the one ball right in the corner pocket for the win. But wow. you know what? Eight, you know, uh, uh, huge difference in the scoring here absolutely be a 12-8 yeah. split now regardless of the outcome here is a 12-8 split see if brian can finish this off for a while it looked like it was going to be like an 18-2 yeah oh he missed it he missed it and look what he left for richard wow what a comeback wow this would be. What a comeback this would be. He knew he had to hit it thin, but not that thin, and came back and left this shot. What a match. Holy Unbelievable, smokes. Unbelievable, folks. What a way to kick things off, huh, Jason? Richard Robles Jr. mounts a huge comeback in the first match here. Picks up a big 12-8 split for his team. Rick's Mo better team. They're going to pick up 12 points there. Shorty's Billiards is going to get eight points. And as you said, Ava, what a comeback that was. Never over till it's over. Whew. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick breather from that one while the players uh, decide who they're going to put up next. So we will be back in just a couple of moments. Stay tuned. Each year, thousands of people from all walks of life head to Las Vegas, chasing hey, hey. the dream. Pocket the ball, avoids wow. the scratch. What a match. What a match. <laughs> what a comeback. <laughs> what begins as a hobby on a pool table in their local bar or pool room evolves through hard work, dedication, and even luck. There it goes again. Oh, oh my God. Wow. wow. Into something bigger, something greater than anything they could have ever imagined. I've got a 14-year-old boy at home that we play a lot in my garage, and because of that, he got to see me win this thing, and that's huge for me and him. Few ever envisioned playing on a stage of this magnitude. 
But once they step forth into a sea of pool tables, as far as the eye can see... 317 tables at this year's event. We like to call it pool playing heaven. The dream has been realized, and the competition begins. For nearly 10 days, they live this dream. And for a select few, who manage to persevere, they return home champions. Part competition, part experience of a lifetime. The APA World Pool Championships has it all and more. So take a moment to let yourself dream. You never know where it might take you. All right, we are back here at Pool Dog Championship Arena with continuing coverage of the APA World Pool Championships brought to you by our friends at PoolDog.com. In our second matchup this afternoon, we've got Naomi Robles of Rick's Mo Betta. Naomi's going to be going against Kristen Baggett of Shorty's Billiards. Naomi is a skill level 3. Kristen is a skill level 2, Ava, which means... 25-19 race. Well, I don't know how they're going to top that last match, but um, I have a feeling this is going to be a close match as well. I don't know if it can get any more exciting than that first one, though. Uh, Kristen breaking here. I'm sure she's pumped after Richard pulled off the win in the first match. To being down so severely, nothing goes. Nine ball was flirting with that corner pocket, but it's going to be in Kristen to the table. Kristen again racing to 19 points. Her team now trailing 12 to 8 after that fantastic comeback by Richard Robles Jr. of Rick's Mo Betta team. Kristen pockets the one. And she just fearlessly shot that in. Didn't get much for it here. I wonder if she is. She is definitely going to be a little bit jacked up here by this five to get to the two that's down here. This is one of those shots that pros have a hard time with, but somehow twos tend to just make it no problem. Oh, how about Look the nine? That. How about we overcut it enough to where we should get the cue ball over to the eight, nine combo. Nice start there by Kristen. Some crazy things happening here in Pool Dog Arena so far today, Ava. It's Halloween is in the air. <laughs> yeah. Naomi looking on. You always hope for, I mean, it's still just two people from each team, each match playing, but you still hope for close matches. And if uh, the first match is going to be an indication of what's going to be in store for us here that would be pretty exciting well nothing down on the break here for Kristen but Naomi's got a shot at the one it's fairly straight into the corner pocket just a little bit of an angle making the one ball here if it's straight it's one thing if it's got that little tiny bit of an angle it's really tough Jason it's a judge you have to aim when you're standing up not when you're down on the ball already because it's going to look wrong 
you can see she's got it's not straight in she's going to have to judge she knows if she makes this the two is right there beautiful nice. shot beautiful shot by naomi Another great situation here. She just makes this and comes out towards the middle of the table. She's going to have a shot at the three. And she can see it. Getting on the four is going to be a really tall order. But at this point, just getting those three balls, if she can get the one, the two, and the three, obviously you run the table a little bit differently if you are a skill level nine, let's say, versus a two or a three. So this point take every point that you can and then deal with whatever comes next oh she missed that one did she leave a shot yes she did if you're just tuning in you're seeing coverage of the APA nine ball world championship here at pool dog arena the second match this afternoon between the teams of Rick's Mo Betta and Shorty's Billiards Kristen Baggett at the table here, currently leading 4-2. to two. Kristen needs 19 points before her opponent, Naomi, gets to 25. You see that 4-8 is an issue. It'll be interesting to see what she does here. There's really no defensive shot. There's no way to know if she's a defensive player or not, even being a skill level 2 if you... Um, if you have intelligence, which I'm sure she does, all you have to have is a coach show you a f few things about your basic defensive shot. You don't have to be a great player to understand defense, but she's just going to go ahead and go. That's probably the move, except, wow, she left a really good opportunity here for Kristen. That hurt. I mean, for Naomi, sorry. Yeah, somebody was asking ab about masks. Everybody here at the event, we've all been wearing masks. We do not have to wear one here in the booth because they liter literally have us this particular year, both in August and now, completely closed in. It's like we're in an aquarium here. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a, a fish. I know how a fish feels. I know. I know. So we're kind of separated from everybody else. The production team has masks on. The audience has masks on. But APA, kudos to you guys because they... Um, contacted and uh, pleaded with the uh, powers to at be here in Las Vegas to say that this is a sport so all the players are allowed to n not ha uh, wear a mask while they're playing. They're kind of isolated, especially in this arena. They're all by themselves there in the corner. All right, funny little angle on the combo, but it's makeable here. Nice, nice shot, cue ball. Not as good, but she can hit the six for sure. It's makeable. Tough being on the rail, but it's makeable. Going to do a timeout here. Talk it over. Again, each team gets a timeout per rack. Get a good look at the revamped Pool Dog Arena here in Las Vegas. Fantastic setup for these players to shoot it out for $30,000, as well as the World Championship. Will it be the team from San Antonio or the team from Hazelhurst, Georgia? Oh, he's going to have her kick at this. Oh, Ooh. she almost made it. <laughs> nice try. All tied at five early in this match. Again, Kristen and her teammates play out of Shorty's Billiards back in Georgia. They said they are super excited to be here, and they're very proud of the entire team in helping them get this far. Wow. 
Kristen was focusing Lucky. on what to do. Oh, no. she almost did it. I had a chance to look down at some of the comments. And first of all, you're welcome, TJ Howard. I see you and you're there. And uh, Luther, just want you to know that Kristen on the right is your skill level two. Naomi is a skill level three. This is Naomi. Easy to do there. I see that a lot with your lower skill level players. They tend to overcut that particular shot very often. Good thing about that is it doesn't leave much for your opponent. Kind of missing it on the pro side by overcutting shots. Seven and a Timmy is cheering Are for... Are they uh, back again? They're cheering for Shorty's <laughs> Billiards back in Georgia. We remember Seven and a Timmy. How could you not? Nine ball champions from 2019. I love some of the names people come up with. It's just, it's just brilliant. Time out here. Roderick Rents talking things over with Kristen. I have to share something. One of our teams in, in uh, Coastal Carolina <laughs> APA... They tricked me, and everybody would laugh when I announced the name, and I couldn't figure out why. Their name is Hoof Hearted. Hoof Hearted. Yeah, who, who did? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would announce it. Sounds like a dad joke and the, right you there. You know, and they just love to pick on me there in Carolina. Yeah. Hoof Hearted. Okay, could you stop saying it now? Sorry, I think it's super <laughs> cute. No, there's nothing cute about it, Jason. Or goofy. I've been around a while, but they got me on that one. Let's see if he's going to have her try to shoot the bank shot here. Yeah. Oh, some body. <laughs> she had some. You, you missed it on the screen, but she had some serious body English there, <laughs> but it didn't quite work. Nice little combo available in the side pocket here. Well, she's going to go for the corner. Good thing about that, that should gain her, not guarantee, but that should gain her four points. By making this, she could end up with no shot on the six. So she would love to make the six ball in the corner, come out for this automatically for the seven, and the nine is right there. This is a definitely an easier shot, but is that six ball going to land on the rail? Yes, it is. Mm. Hit the ball, ball and the rail at the same time. Oh, she overcut it. And this could be two huge points for Kristen, who's a yeah. skill level two. Three points. Yeah, sorry, three points. And that... That could really be costly here for Naomi and Rick's Mo Better. Yeah, these short point races with these lower skill levels, yeah. anything can really happen. It's a lot of times you see a <coughs> if somebody putting up a higher skill level, seven, eight, or nine. A lot of times they will put a one or a two on them because <coughs> all it takes is cue ball scratching on the break, getting snooker where you have to kick, give them ball in hand, and all of a sudden they sneak up from behind. And I've always said to all my nines, if you're going to play a one, you better play like a nine, like really play like a nine. Nice shot. Nice shot there by Kristen. Big three points there at the end of that rack. Kristen regains the lead, eight to six. Again, she needs to get to only 19 points, so she needs 11 more. Before Naomi gets to 25, Naomi now needs 19. Matthew Bryson is asking if both teams have a skill level 9. They do not. 
Uh, Shorty's Billiards yeah, yeah. has a skill, skill level 9. That is Rod, the captain. And Rick's more better. They have Richard Robles, who's an 8. An eight. Yeah. So we'll see if there's going to be a clash of the Titans before or if they're going to kind of mismatch. And it'll be interesting to see. I'm going to make sure we thank our sponsors. Of course, we've mentioned PoolDog.com, but also the folks at Air Myth Billiard Balls, Action Cues, and Valley Dynamo Tables. Over 300 Valley Tables used in this year's World Championship. Only one still in use here, Ava, as the, the tournament's rooms are torn down behind us. And mm. the attention all focused here in Pool Dog Arena on this final match. Kristen with the break. No, nothing happened on the break. But uh, got away with it. No shot on the one ball here. All Naomi's going to have is a shot on the one ball all the way down in the corner. And again, the kind of shot that if you miss it, it's very easy to leave an easy shot for Kristen. She's going for a combo. This is a terrific, tricky combination here, Jason. <coughs> Not to mention the fact that the side pockets are nowhere near as friendly as the corner pockets here. Really keep your head down on this and trust that you're hitting it in the right place. Yeah, that was, that was difficult, difficult. It's a nice little shot here. I'm not sure she's going to be able to see the shot, but the four ball is very makeable. If you hit a thin hit on the one coming up here, if she's trying to make this one ball, if it's thin enough, she may be able to pocket the four ball there instead or as well. She can hit the one thin enough. No, just too thick of a hit there. Brings Naomi back to the table. Looking to get something going here. I don't know if it's going to happen on this one ball, though. Nope. Scratches in the corner. Kristen Baguette will have ball in hand. Again, a couple of little things have gone Kristen's way. But like we saw before, in the match before that, things went on Brian's way as well. But then Richard ended up coming in at the end. Kind of the tide turned a little bit. So way too early for Naomi to hang her head here. Pockets that one on the side. All right, it's going to queuing over this five ball. It came down on it nicely. Where's this cue ball going to go? Oh, Christmas. She's got a shot at the three in the side here. If she hits it firm like that. She could go around the table if she avoids the seven and come up for the four even without even realizing that possibly that may be happen. But we'll see what she's going to do. There might be a good timeout opportunity here. I don't know. She looks like she might need some encouragement as far as what to do she's gonna play oh she's gonna go for a bank I think she does not like that oh 
How about that shot? That was close. Watch out. Mm. That nine ball got in the game there for a second. Nice shot. Cuts that three in the corner. And this is a this is a good time up time out opportunity here. See where that nine ball is on the other side of the pocket. If we look at the overhead here, you can see this is a huge pocket right here because of where the nine is at. If she banks this four ball even to here, mm. it's gonna more than likely go in off the nine. So as long as she banks it to the left side. She should have a chance. Oh, it just hit the point. And, and a scratch. scratch. Like I said, things are going Kristen's way in little ways, obviously. Yeah, well, she knew what to do. She just yeah. couldn't execute. Yeah, right? it was yeah. But anytime you have a ball near the pocket like that, look for that kind of a bank opportunity where it's kind of a long shot. If it isn't there, but if it is there, you got some help. Nice. By a ball hanging right by the pocket. Tip of the day right there. <laughs> yeah. The striking Viking. Not too deep deep of a tip, but man, it comes up quite a bit. Kristen now with a 10-7 lead. Again, she needs 19. Let's see if she can stop the cue ball there. Good shot. I like that even as a two, she hits the ball it's with authority. A lot of times people kind of push the ball. and um, But being able to shoot a stop shot is one of the first things, I think, that you want to teach your skill level two or one. That comes in pretty handy. Following the ball is obviously a natural thing. Forget about drawing the ball if you're a one or a two, but a stop shot is so important for getting position. Oh, slide nice. it in. And we'll see if she can make this one. Seven is right there as long as she doesn't end up behind the eight. It's a, almost a full pocket. I would say about a little more than two-thirds of it. She's got the nine right there. Just seven points away now. Five points still on the table here. Oh, it <laughs> worked out. <laughs> A little smirk there from Kristen and shook her head, but she goes, I'll take it. Hello, John Arnolds. You say you're from Texas. Are you uh, friends or familiar with this team out of San Antonio? Watch. Oh, wow. A lot going on there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but nothing drops. Naomi Robles back to the table. Four points still available in this rack. It's a speed position here. Natural position on the eight. Good speed, perfect. Bear down here. She can follow this eight. Come down one cushion and up. Or she can hit it low if she wants. And well, she just change it to hit low. It's going to leave a little bit longer of a shot on the nine. But whatever makes you comfortable making that eight right now. Good shot. Beautiful. Beautiful shot by Naomi.
It's a big nine here, these two points. Not just for this match, but for the overall score. Her team has the lead now. 12-8, but she definitely doesn't want to give that favor back. So she needs to make this nine ball. Oh, wow. Not only hung it up, but left this shot here for Kristen, which is going to bring her within four balls if she makes this nine. going to see a timeout here. Roderick Rents wants to leave nothing to chance here. This two points, as Ava mentioned, pocketing this nine ball would put Kristen four points away from victory here. She would also have the break once again. Again, I think this is mostly because they haven't taken the timeout yet. He figures why not. Just want to make sure she aims it correctly. That looks good to me. All right, two more points there for Kristen. <laughs> can well, see. Well, pressure there, yeah, you can feel it. Again, Kristen now four points away, and what happens from here on out with Naomi again determines how those points break down between these two. Naomi with nine points right now, anyway, Ava, if this match were to finish with only nine points, you'd be looking at an 18-2 split, so... But we, if, if the last match taught us anything, it looked like <laughs> yeah. it was going to be an 18-2 there, too. The other side, and then Richard just came back and tied it up and made that one ball for the win. So, I mean, it's, it's far from over. I know Kristen would love to make a ball or two here on the break, obviously, but... Oh, nine ball. How about that? Ooh. Oh, Wow. Holy smokes. Oh, she wanted that one, didn't she? But look what happened. She also got lucky. Things continue to go Kristen's way. Not, ha not only has she been playing really solid and making the ball she needs to make, but what an uphill battle so far for Naomi. That nine ball just hanging in that corner. This game can be cruel. I have a feeling the referee is going to get a closer look at this, considering where that three ball is. Make sure it's not a bad hit. Again, you're watching the finals of the APA Nine Ball World Championship here at Pool Dog Arena in Las Vegas. A $30,000 match here for these two teams. Rick's Mo Betta team out of San Antonio, represented here by Naomi Robles at the table. Their opponent, Shorty's Billiards, out of Hazelhurst, Georgia. Kristen Baggett currently seated, leading this 15-9. Ava, so far, I mean, overall match, very even, right? I mean, looks like one's going to pull match, ahead. Yeah, and yeah, sure. No. Very important, and Naomi took her time here. To, very important for her to hit this one ball. Too soft. That's not going to work. You hit the 
kick at a ball softly, it's going to really elongate the angle. Even if she was lined up close to correctly and you baby it like that, you've got to hit it with at least center speed for it to do, for it to, you know, come out from where you had planned it. So ball in hand now. But I don't know if there's a shot here on the one. She might be able to make it in the side. Uh, he's going for the billiard. He's going to line her up for the billiard on the nine ball in the corner pocket for the two points, which would bring her, if she makes that, that would bring Kristen within two of the win. He's showing her how to cue it, where to hit it. That's obviously very legal. And explaining kind of what's going to happen. I have a feeling this may be a shot Kristen has never been faced with before. He's trying to make this billiard here. That tells me that one ball is not makeable in the side pocket either, and they can get a quick two points. Let's see if Kristen can execute what her captain has shown her. Attempting to go off the one into the nine. It's got her lined up perfectly. See if she can stroke it. Don't want to hit it. Yeah, there it is. Two Good more shot. points. Good coaching. Good shot. Kristen now two points away from victory. We'll have the break. Ava and Naomi still at nine. So if Kristen can finish this off before Naomi picks up another point, actually another couple points, well, she, she gets to 10, it'd be 17-3. So. Right. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but as Kristen inches ever closer, you do start to look at the point break. Yeah, this would be Naomi. would love to make a few more balls here to kind of uh, stop the bleeding a little bit as far as the points race. Kristen Baguette with the break. Four Just ball. One ball. One ball. No shot. She's in. She's on the hill. Would be huge for Naomi even to get one more ball down here. That would bring her to ten, and that should get her a seventeen three instead of eighteen two mm -hmm. loss. Even if it were to end after this, but. Um, one of the things she's got going for is no shot really for Kristen here. Five hits the rail. All right, let's see if Naomi can pick up a couple more points here. This two would be huge. Would at least move her to the 17-3 split. If she can get to 12 points. She'd be looking at 16-4. Nice shot, big game there, big big ball, I should say. Yep, nicely done. Yeah. Going to see a timeout here by Rick's Mo Betta team. And you know, I'm laughing a little bit. I was because it was kind of a. Slow point there, I was looking at some of the comments, and I guess some of the people who probably don't play APA have a problem with players, with the captain being able to line them up and show them how to shoot it and place the cue ball and everything else. This is an amateur league. This is part of what a coach didn't do. C coach can't shoot the shot or be behind and touch the cue as they're playing or whatever. But, yeah, this is... This is uh, American Pool Players Association, and we're an amateur league. We won't be able... Oh. Players to be able to learn, to appreciate the game, to... So, yes, all that is legal. There's no phony baloney business. <laughs> Certainly not in here with a half dozen <laughs> officials watching no. the match at this point. No. Whew. 
Gotta love the at-home referees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another timeout here. And, and how about showing some appreciation for both both the court coach and the shooter when Kristen made that billiard? I mean, yeah, I mean, he lined it up absolutely perfectly for her and told her how to shoot it, and she shot it well enough for the ball to go in. I mean, how, instead of going off on the whole thing. So anyway. Trying to help this her is, finish this match this off. This is it right here. Now I'm sh mm. Oh, did she get away with that one? I'm not sure why he gave her so, such a big angle there, though. He could have just maybe not straight in, but why put so much angle? That was kind of a strange, unless he's unsure what the score is, because all she needed was that one different if she had to come up for position on the four but I think he may have been confused as to what the score was hmm interesting well Kristen has this close to straight in the side pocket again that angle in the side and these valley tables is tight. But it's definitely makeable. She's got it. Nice folks. shot. Kristen Baguette. 19 points. She is your winner here in this second match. Naomi having got to 10. We're looking at a 17-3 split there. And that means the team of Shorty's Billiards now controlling the match. Twenty-five to fifteen. It's going to be interesting to see now if they put up their skill level nine. We've seen a lot of comments here on the stream about um, about their skill level nine on Shorty's Billiards team, Rod Rents that he is about to put on a little exhibition for us, I guess, according to what we're hearing here. All right. No we're, pressure. <laughs> I think we're going to take a quick break while we find out who the teams are going to put up next. We'll be back in just a few moments. Stay tuned. Las Vegas, for most, the ultimate party destination, a place to run wild and leave the routine behind. But for a pool player, it's so much more. Their ultimate goal, their grandest stage, their biggest moment. It's time to take your Vegas fate into your own hands. One, compete and win a local qualifier board to advance to a regional event. Two, once there, be a top finisher in your own skill level tier. Three, win a trip to Las Vegas to compete in the APA Pool Player Championships. Four, own your biggest moment on pool's grandest stage. Take your Vegas fate into your own hands today. Realize your Vegas destiny tomorrow.
come from all walks of life. Different backgrounds. Different abilities. We all have different reasons for doing what we do, but we're all one. One love. One passion. One big family. We are. We are. Our American pool players. And American pool players. American pool players. And this is our league. We are back here at Pool Dog Arena, continuing coverage of the APA World Nine Ball Championship. Stephanie Rents at the table for Shorty's Billiards. She'll have the break here after winning the lag. Stephanie is skill level five. Her opponent, Tony Cuellar, also a skill level five. So we have a 38-38 race here between these two players. As we mentioned earlier, the team of Shorty's Billiards now in the lead. 25 to 15. Stephanie made the two ball on the break there, but missed the one, but that kind of turned out okay. At least in, from Stephanie's person, <laughs> where she's looking at it. So um, not much for Tony to do here than go down to the end cushion some right spin. He did. He hit it, but ooh, wait a minute. Oh, there's a billiard here. There's a billiard here. Cue ball, thin hit. Make the nine ball in the corner pocket. Got to hit this thin, though. It's a good time for a timeout. You almost, almost can't hit this too thin. Gonna make sure she understands where to hit this ball. Skill level five, she should know pretty well, but it doesn't help to have somebody there and making sure you can see how thin she is striking that. And oh, just not quite thin enough. Left an open shot here for Tony to join Stephanie on the board. And figures that one ball in the center gets you every time if you don't pay attention. So he's going to have to kick at this three. Side pocket? Nope. Bring Stephanie back to the table. Sure, she's going to go for the bank here. Again, I'd go for the bank by where the nine is. That makes the pocket even bigger there, too. But she went for the natural bank. Almost made it. Well, a little draw shot here. Shoot the bank and the nine both. Oh, you drew it too much. It's kind of a 2 8 shot there. Noticed uh, Tony doesn't like to take too much time, both standing up or getting once he's down on the table. I kind of like it. I'm good with style. that. I'm good with that. I like to keep it moving. Kind of like playing Gayang Kim, where she just gets up and. S Except she never misses. I hated that about <laughs> her. All right, that turned out just fine. Slow start to this first rack here. The third matchup of our nine ball here world goes, championship. Here goes, here goes the three and the cue ball. No, he just Things barely on. <laughs> hung on there. Tony pulls ahead here just slightly. Chance to do some more damage. Pockets that four in the side. Here's this tester here, Jason. Thin cut. Wants the cue ball to come and come down and stay there. Yeah. It's tough to do, but he overcut it. Did he get away with it, though? Wow. 
There's been a lot of interesting little leaves yeah. so far in this match, huh? I don't know if Stephanie would agree right now with that terminology, interesting. But <laughs> <laughs> She'd probably have a different word for it. Yeah. Gotta go one cushion. She could go two here, would be even a better shot. Oh, no. All right, we could be looking at three-pointer here and a few dead balls if he comes across for this 6-9 combination. Just one rail. And that looks pretty juicy right there. Tony's up six to one. Really wants to make some noise in this match here to bring down the lead for Shorty's Billiards, who are ahead 25-15 in the team score. I don't know about you, Jason, but I get the feeling this one's going down to the wire, kind of, yep. you know, team points. Nice solid break there. Did he get any love in from it? Three ball goes. Made a couple balls in the break. And look at the shot he has at the one to start off a run here. Another good opportunity. The two. He's going to have to come out to this part of the table somewhere, though. Follow it around. It went rail first. Look out, nine ball. Oh, they got there just in time. Isn't it a good opportunity here to run this table? It's wide open. Nothing's on the rail. Nice speed there just to shoot a stop shot. This is the kind of a dream layout. Oh, he just messed up the dream layout a little bit. He shook his head. He's still okay, though. A little low right on this. Like I said, he takes no prisoners. He goes, plays really fast. I kind of like his style here. And that's one of those pretty racks where if you keep control of the cue ball, you're going to have an easy run out. But here he just came up way up on this nine. And this is kind of a funky angle because you can't see the corner pocket out of your eye when you go to aim it. So good time to take a time out. Yeah, Tom, sorry. That was my fault. It's beautiful shot. Ball. Beautiful, beautiful bank. Tony takes a commanding lead after that first second rack, I'm sorry. If you're interested in becoming an APA League Operator, you can go to poolplayers.com slash league operator. Learn a little bit more about what life is like for a league operator like Ava Lawrence or Florian Venom Kohler <laughs> or the other 300 league operators we have across the globe. Crazy hard work, but it's a fun, fun thing to do, I have to say. I love it. Tony with the break. Solid break. Very wow. solid. Wow. Gets the one to go. It's like it's Can raining. See the two. Made three balls on the break, and he's got the eight ball hanging there for a bank opportunity. No. Boy, I can hardly keep up with him. He shoots so quick. I know. He's just firing away. It's like I said, it's like watching Love Guy it. Young. You look down for one second, and a couple balls are gone.
see if she can avoid getting snookered here behind the seven. She's going to have to hit it firmer than that. No, well, she got her one point, but not much going on here. Yuck. Um, she can't go down to the bottom cushion. Yeah, there you go. She needs to yeah, I'm gonna measure that straight out. Time out here now. Looking at the mirror system to kind of double the distance from the ball to the edge of the rail and straight out the same distance to try to find her spots to hit it. Now you need to hit this with some speed because if not, it's going to change the angle. If the nine wasn't there, I much prefer if she could, if she can get deep enough to come up here, but I don't think that angle is there. You always want to look for the cushion that is closest to the object ball, which would be this one right here as your last one to hit. So it looks like they're going around. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Good coaching again. Good execution again. And was she rewarded? I don't think she can make it on the side. I, th I don't think he can. I think it's too, seven is in the way. So let's hit it hard. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I like his style. Good job there. She needed that to get her confidence going. Yes, Mike Denbo, uh, Wilmington, not far from Cap Le Camp Lejeune, correct? That's where um, Coastal Carolina, that's where my league is. Run that with my family, my daughter and son-in-law. and Lots of help from great players and division reps and everything else, and it's good time. See what she's going to do here. That was a tall order cutting that backwards. <laughs> but we'll see where that seven ball is pointed. If he kicks at this, there's a possibility of making the eight. Now hit the other side of it. Stephanie rents here at the table. Shorty's billiards. Mm, I would prefer looking at the combination there. That billiard was kind of tricky and you wouldn't necessarily get much of a position afterwards. Didn't leave much again though for Tony, but he ke keeps coming up with something. I just missed it. She jumped up on that one a little bit. I would suggest really pay attention to no matter how fast or slow you shoot, how long you stay down on the ball, whatever yours is, but stop at a dress where the tip is near the cue ball or at the cue ball before you shoot that last time so your eyes have a chance to look at the object ball. If you are one of the few players that look at the cue ball before you shoot, that's fine, but the worst place it can be is in between the object ball and the cue ball. Because your arm, the brain hasn't had time to tell your arm what to do. And it's kind of a, that becomes a panic shot. And the more nervous you get, the more panicked you get, and the more you rush it, and it's downhill from there. So really make sure that you have 
your eyes in one place or the other before you pull back that last um, that last pull back before you shoot. Okay, things going Tony's way here. Came up, some speed he hit that with, and a uh, pretty situation yeah. here. Yep. See if he can finish this off and pocket this nine ball for two more points to extend his sizable lead here in this third match for the nine ball championship. Not a problem there for Tony. He's got two more points. The referee will prepare the next rack. 24 to three now in favor of Tony. This has been a seesaw battle here, Ava. Just when it looked like in the first match that Shorty's Billiards would be victorious. We saw the comeback by Richard Robles Jr. And they had the early lead and then Kristen Baggett of Shorty's Billiards came back in that second match, pulled her team ahead. And now we've got Rick's Mobetta team behind Tony Cuellar. Trying to cap off and take this third match. Not much for here for Stephanie to look at. It's really hard to get out of that chair when, when the pool of gods are against you. No matter what happens, you're constantly faced with tough shots. feels like your opponent is, always gets kind of a smorgasbord of opportunities, and you... It's a nightmare every time, especially playing nine ball where there's only one ball that you need to hit all the time. So she's just going to do her best here, make sure to make contact with this one. It's not an easy shot. And again, hit it with, if you, once you pick out your spot, that is the, if it's the correct spot, make sure you hit it with some speed. You can't baby it or it's going to elongate that angle coming off the rail. Another time out here. Roderick Rents talking things over with Stephanie. Oh, nice try. Just not too many things going her way. And another ball in hand situation for Tony to be able to create something here. He's got the 3 8 combo or the 3 5 combo. Either way, I would think he's going to pick up some points here. Oh, it only turned out, almost turned out to be only one. Definitely didn't look like that eight ball was going to hang, but just last second dropped. Now he's on the incorrect side of this three ball to get good position on the four. Nine ball is huge right there. Did he hit it hard enough? Just barely. All right, here's his last challenge in this. A few tap-ins there, and that's the seven. Not much of a challenge. Table was wide, wide open. Nine in the side there. Two more points for Tony Cuellar.
Tony needs just four more points here. Looking at the point split as of right now, it would be a 20 to 0 split, Ava. That would Stephanie be. Stephanie needs to find a way to pick up some points. That would be tough. But at the same time, they're up 10 points. That's going to more or less even up the match. Referee preparing the rack. Shout out to all the referees that have been working so hard here the last 11 days or so in Las Vegas. All of our referees are APA members. Nine ball was flirting with the pocket there, but instead he made a couple. The two and the three, and he's got a shot on the one. Is about the toughest shot he's had here in a while. Ooh. And again, like I said, <laughs> when it rains, it pours. I mean, poor, poor Stephanie. Everything has gone Tony's way. The fact that that ball hung up, the nine. I mean, the cue ball is just. How did that happen? And I believe she's corner hooked on top of it. She sure is. The nine ball has her blocked from kicking at it. Wow. I don't even know where do you coach her to hit from here. I mean, hitting into the point the way you can on the short side, that's no good because you can't get enough speed to get it up there. I don't even know. Yeah, There's really no ball out. to tie yep. up. Wow. Talk things over here. Again, Tony just a couple of points away from me. 20-0 shutout. Unless Stephanie can pick up. she got to get to at least seven to avoid that. So we'll see. Not looking good at the moment, though. Just everything going the wrong way here. Yeah, he's going to try. This is about the only shot there is, but very easy to kind of get stuck there and double hit the cue ball and to get it enough speed to make it all the way up um this would be one impressive shot if she pulled this off yeah, yeah. wow and look at the layout here this is very very makeable layout for a skill level five starting with ball in hand the four is right in front of the pocket the five is right there well, he needs one more point and this match is over Oh, is that all he needs? That's it. Yeah. When it rains, it pours. 20-0. There it is, folks. Tony Cuellar. 38-3. He's going to get 20 points for his team. And just like that, Ava. Well, Shorties was ahead 25-2. Now they're 15. trailing, 35-25. Now they're trailing by 10, so. Back and forth, back and forth we go. All right, folks, while these teams put up their next players in the fourth match, we're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more coverage of the APA World Nine Ball Championships in just a moment.
All right, we are back here at Pool Dog Championship Arena for the fourth match of our Nine Ball World Championship. We're going to see Sandy Hunter, skill level two for Shorty's Billiards, against David Cantu of Rick's Mo Betta team. He is a skill level four, which means David needs 31 points to Sandy's 19. And the number to watch here, folks, would be for David to win the match with Sandy getting 10 or less points, that would mean victory for Rick's Mobetta team. But as it stands, Sandy is at the table. Got majority of the pocket here. Oh, off the four would have worked, but no cigar. She get away with it. I do believe that David can make this one ball. David is on the board. Again, if David can win this match with 31 points and keep Sandy at 10 or less, that would be a championship for Rick's Mo Betta team. Well, that was unfortunate for Sandy. He didn't come with much there, but ended up leaving her in this jam. She can just barely hit the three ball, but that's about it. Are you surprised we're not seeing Roderick Rents at this point? The skill level nine for Shorty's Billiards. He looms large. Not really. I mean, uh, you know, skill level nine, the skill level seven in, in eight ball is incredibly valuable and can really, you know, make do some damage. Or skill level nine, unless they're going up against another nine and they're a better player or an eight or, um, you know, that's the thing about nine ball. And nine doesn't necessarily have that advantage, especially playing if somebody puts a lower skill level player on them. And sometimes you can play the better numbers by not playing the nine. So it's been a very even kind of, you know, look at how many, play, uh, Kristen Badgett has played nine matches and Roderick and Stephanie on that same team, Shorty's Billiards have played seven. Other than that, it's really spread out about four matches each. And it's very same same thing on, on uh, their opponent's team. Um, pretty much everybody's been playing, so it's kind of a strategy. You look at not only your own lineup, but what kind of lineup does the opponent have to match up. So I admire captains that are really good at understanding how to do the matchups and give themselves great opportunities. Well, good shot there, poor position. I have to come with something on this five ball. Obviously looking to play a bank, I would think. Sandy back to the table here. she has to do is find the angle. She wants to follow this, not hit down on it. That could be flirting with disaster. Just follow it nice and smooth. All right. That's one, Sandy. 18 more is what she needs. She really obviously needs this play strong in this match to bring it into a fifth match. Little love for Sandy this time, I believe so.
I believe he's going to go straight down. You can go to the side rail here, but it's an easier hit to go to the bottom cushion. Yeah. I would think. See a timeout. They want to talk it over a little bit here. You know, usually you watch the pros and you try to, the pros will try to hit one side of the, uh, or the other, uh, playing a defensive shot more often or an offensive to kind of figure out the leave after position, everything else. But at this level, you just need to make sure you make contact and hope something good happens. There you go. Let's see if he gets some appreciation from that. Not too shabby. That nine ball is there, but that is not an easy combination, Jason, because you have to kind of if it was hanging in the pocket, yes, but she really has to cut this and then cut the nine ball. So your margin of error here is tiny, tiny, tiny. And watch out for the scratch in the side. Watch out, watch out. Oh, boy. So the nine ball drops, but we'll come back out. Tony will have ball in hand. I've always been amazed at guys that, how did they get the gla sunglasses to stay up there? <laughs> <laughs> I like never understood. I see it there. so often. And I, oh, he didn't come back long enough. Snookered by the eight. I well, gave it a whirl, though. Chance to go in somewhere. Bank shop set up for Sandy. Another timeout here by Shorty's Billiards. See the prize money breakdown here at the World Nine Ball Championships. 30000 to the winner of this match. The runner-up is going to take home 15000 We had two teams earlier today, Ava, that each took home 6000 for finishing in third place and making it to the final day of competition. All part oh, that's going to go. That's going to go. No. Oh. I've said it before, Jason. I, it's still amazing that that kind of, I mean, payout for an amateur tournament. I mean, you don't see. Now, I know there's several people on the team, but you don't see a $50,000 payout in any pro tournament mm -hmm. these days, except for occasional. Uh, Moscone is really starting to. Um, Moscone's Cup is going up, and uh, there's a few tournaments now that are boiling that are really going to have some good mo prize money, but. It's pretty cool. And again, this is year 2020 and 2021 combined, so it was a huge tournament. The largest ever, as a matter of fact. Right, Jason? <sighs> Such a relief, too, to, <laughs> to, to about to have it in the books after everything that went down the last 18 months and not knowing if people that had qualified to come out would ever get that opportunity. And credit to the, the tournament team back at the office for finding a way to make that happen. Absolutely. And, you know, it wasn't easy. And I know people had to be real patient, but and, and we there got were some here. early mornings here and some late <laughs> nights, but that was the only way to do it unless we added like two more days to the event. And you know, it's a long time for players to be out here to begin with, so you just had to take some naps in between. Look out, scratch! Oh, she's all right. Another point <laughs> there for Sandy. Good shot. Yeah, I mean, with all the events that were canceled. 2020 and 2021 it's amazing that we were able to pull it off and yes. get everybody who earned a spot out here to get to come out and play and that was always important in all the conversations that we had back at the office right you know it's it's so difficult to qualify to come out here so once you do it you know you want to be able to honor that for people and 
It's all worked out. And it almost worked out there for Sandy. Not quite. Not quite, but she's holding her own. It's all right. Yep. Still Two more points here on the board, potentially, for David. Again, she only goes to 19. David has to get to 31. Pocket oh, slid that nine. in. So he takes the first rack, 8 to 2. Again, we mentioned this earlier, but that magic number to see a fifth match, Sandy needs to get to at least 11 points. She's got to get to 11 to force that fifth match. And if she only gets to 11, whew, it's going to be a tough chore for whoever gets put up in that match. You but bet. All that of this be. transpiring here at Pool Dog Championship Arena in Las Vegas. Our thanks to our friends at Pool Dog, your presenting sponsor of this year's APA World Championships coverage. David Cantu with the break. Dry break there brings Sandy back to the table. Oh, close. Good leave. Unless that one ball is dead off the nine. You'd have to hit it really firm, but I, I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, he tried to get it, make the ball clean, and that didn't work out. And this is one of those shots here, trying to make this one ball in here. The beauty of that is it's a normal scratch shot, so five being there is going to stop the scratch and possibly make the five if she undercuts it a little bit. So kind of a, a backup plan here if things don't work out, making the one, she could make them both. Oh, she went the other way. You know, she that the other took way things got out of the way, yeah. and she got a safety out of it. <laughs> Another timeout here. Rick's Mobetta team wants to talk things over. Just over two hours into this match, Ava. This has been a quick one so far. It has. Well, everybody's playing fairly quickly. You know, a lot of times you see people thinking and, stay, you know, but they're, they're ready to go. And they've been playing a lot of matches. So I'm sure they're getting a little tired on top of it. Just they, <laughs> had an, they had an 8 a.m. round this morning. I know it. Pockets oh. the one in the side. See if she can make this bank shot here, make the five. Oh, no, she made the billiard on the four. Nice shot. Perfect. Oh. We want to see it go five, don't we? We're not rooting for anybody here to make it clear, <laughs> but we want to see five matches and have it come down. That would be so appropriate in this match, the way it's kind of seesawed back and forth. Yeah. Can't pocket that two in the corner. Bring David back. David and his teammates out of San Antonio, Texas. Their opponents, Shorty's Billiards out of Hazelhurst, Georgia. 
made a statement there, didn't he? And landed very sweet on this three ball. Just got to cut it just a hair. Five is right in the pocket. Six is right there. He could really extend his lead here. Oh, no. Got away with one, though. Oh, everything almost went, it seemed like. When in doubt, hit him hard. There's six <laughs> pockets. Oh, he's not going to like that, though. Another opportunity at the table here for Sandy. Sandy gets down on the ball really well. Good setup. Looks like she might be overcutting that a hair. Yeah, just a little bit. Don't get frustrated, Sandy. You're still very much in this. It's going to, I think there's going to be a closer match than the score is telling right now. Again, David has to go to 31, and she only has to go to 19. So the score looks a bit lopsided, but in reality, it really isn't. All right, Sandy, back to the table again. See another time out here. Sandy's captain Roderick Rents trying to line her up for this next shot. You can see in the background David Cantu talking things over with Richard Robles. Nice, nice shot done there by Sandy. Good timeout. W well executed. Picks up her fifth point. And I do love <coughs> a, a skill level two or three that knows how to hit the ball with some speed. You know what I mean? Because you still, you know, it doesn't make you a better player, but it gives you an opportunity in a tough situation that the, to make something. Oh. Ooh, well. If you just lag everything, chances are the object ball is going to end up in front of the pocket if you miss it. But if it's a tougher shot, hit it with some speed so you don't at least leave it for your opponent. And who knows, you might be able to make something. So David finishes off that rack. Extends his lead. Again, David trying to get to 31 points before Sandy gets to 19. And if he gets to 31 points before Sandy gets to 11, that would be it, folks. Referee preparing the next rack.
Nice shot of the spectators here in Pool Dog Championship Arena. A lot of folks sticking around to check out this final match. See which team takes home the $30,000 top prize. David with the break once again. Well, that nine was flying. Six ball goes down. Not much to look at here on this one ball. He's pretty tall, so he may be able to reach it to play for the bank one rail. We can play an easy safety here behind the seven and eight. There you go. That was a well-played shot yeah. instead of going from something crazy. I just hadn't seen much defense. I wasn't expecting that at first. Referee taking a look at that one ball. Double checking if it is frozen to the rail in case she makes contact one and just hits it something else something has to go to a cushion after hit either the cue ball has, has to hit the cushion where the one ball is situated at or the one or the cue ball has to hit a different rail so She looks like she's hitting w this way too short. So that's going to bring our ball in hand now. It's a big break for David. Not an easy shot on the one and not easy position on the two ball either here. That eight is kind of blocking the pocket. The five ball has him blocked, for blocked from getting good position on it. Worst case scenario, you take your shot, you take your ball, roll it down a little bit, and maybe even make the 2-8 billiard, the 2-8 combo. Mm. Oh, a little careless. That one may not matter that much to you, but it does to Sandy, who only needs to go to 19. So that happens a lot, though. You know, you're playing, and you know there's a trouble coming up. Your, soul, your mind is still on that. And hasn't had time to switch over to just make that ball. So even pros will miss an easy shot sometimes. Sometimes even when ball in hand, I've seen pros miss because their brain is thinking about what's coming up, the trouble, how they're going to solve that later, especially when you're on the clock. Uh-oh. Another mistake there by Sandy. Yeah, she had an opportunity there. David again having trouble with that one Second ball. Second time with the ball. And Mike got a lot, a little lucky there. Yeah. No, not quite. Ball in hand, and he missed it again there. Again, he doesn't like the two ball. Did not leave an easy shot by any means on this one. The one is on the rail, so it's not like just a tap in. She actually she really has to cut this one in. And her taking a timeout. I'm a little bit surprised at this timeout at this point especially when the rack is kind of messed up like that. All this is really is make the one or don't make the one kind of a shot. You know what I mean? So this is the first time I've, I think that his timeouts have been spot on throughout this whole match. This is the first time I'm going, I don't know, I would save it, I think. Although she does get two timeout co outs, correct, as a skill level two. In the championship, correct, Jason? I believe it's I'm only one. On I you. think it's only one per for rack. For a skill, for a skill level, two. I okay. think regardless of skill level here, yeah. In league, yes, I think here it's one. Hmm. I think. Yeah, you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 
Your team's never made the championship anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, excuse me, my team is three-time defending champion of our division. Okay, well, that's I'm happy mm -hmm. for you. I was talking about the championship. I know, <laughs> but they don't let us come to Vegas. We don't even get to try. I know. All right. David Cantu just continuing to pick up points here. Gets ever closer to that magic number of 31. Wow, you were right. Mike What's McKinney that? says two. We do two locally when we have championships. But these guys are all saying one. Carolinas, we usually give two for skill level one and two. Three is enough. Get two. I mean, get one. God, it's getting confusing. All right, so not much going on here. If you hit a thin hit on the three, you could get a defensive shot out of it. Because you know that three it doesn't have to be that thin either because the three is going to stay there and you can send the cue ball up table. All right, nice separation there between the cue ball and the three. That's about all you can really do. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Sandy just can't get going. Another ball in hand opportunity for David. Another point on the board there. It's now big, needs 11. Big shot here. He makes this. He's a favorite to make the other four, considering where the 7 and 8 and 9 are. Just 10 more points needed for David. Down the nine. Got a little farther away than he wanted, but built in position. Just play the speed here. Pockets the eight in the corner. <laughs> Nicely done by David. As he gets ever closer to that magic number of 31. Now six points away, folks. The score is now 25 to five. Make sure we acknowledge our sponsors one more time, the good folks here at PoolDog.com, Aramith Billiard Balls. Action cues. And of course, our friends at Valley Dynamo, specifically our friends at High Country Promotions, who brought in the 300 plus tables that were used this week, most of which, Ava, have already disappeared from the big tournament rooms, it's ironically amazing. enough, how quickly those come out. I walked by, by the Mini Mania room, and all the tables were kind of on the side, and they were all, you know, the, just uh, ready to be loaded up. Well, Sandy is quickly running out of opportunities here. Needs to get something going. Mm -mm -mm. Another ball in hand opportunity for David. One 
in the side. Five points away. Oh, pockets the two in the corner but scratches. And we'll see if that can get Sandy going. That two will go down as a dead ball. Crowd giving her some appreciation yeah, there. Obviously that was not being happy about him scratching, but it was kind of pumping Sandy up a little bit. She hit placed this softly. So she'll be able to get these two points. Nice. 3-8 combo, but... Oh, boy. Not what she wanted to do with the three. No. I don't think she can bank it here either. I think it's... Oh, yeah, she can. Oh, nice. yeah, she can. And look at this position. All right, Sandy. Again, the magic number here is for Sandy to get to 11 to force a fifth match. I'm going for the bank here. Nope. No, and check out where that four ball is going to land. Another point for David. Needs just four. Watch Look out. out. Look Another out. scratch shot. Boy, Ava, we've seen a lot of scratch Unbelievable. shots in this match. Yeah, it's true. But, again, when you shoot and you let the cue ball loose a lot, they both play pretty firm shots. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's going to obviously increase your chances. It's going to be a lot more scratches, obviously, with a lower skill level than a higher because they're not sure always of where the cue ball is heading. But you're right. I think this has been kind of disproportionately so. We'll see now if... Sandy holds it together. She could pick up at least a couple of big sh points here. She needs to really make something happen. There's one. Puts her at eight. There's two. And puts her at nine points again. Magic number to extend this match is 11. Worst possible place, though, that the yeah. cue ball could land right there, jacked up over the nine. Oh, I don't like this shot at all. Nobody does. Short backstroke and follow through. Well, did she get away with it? David's got a shot at the seven in the side. Another timeout here for Rick's Mo Betta team. Richard Robles talking it over with David Cantu. Trying to help him finish off this rack, this championship run. Somebody is correcting. Maybe we can get their stat statisticians to figure this out. Somebody correcting you, saying that you're, they're supposed to get to 13, not 11. She is a 2. So if she's at 9 or 10 points, that's a 16-4 split. They only need 16 points. She gets to 11, that'd be a 15-5 split. Put them in. There you go. 50. Although, I guess if they're at 50 with three match wins, well, I don't think it's going to matter. No. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. it's getting. I would uh, just love for it to go to the fifth match here. Yeah. And they're talking about that now, how many more points. And it's just one, folks. He can do it here on the break. A ball on the break, and the party will be on for the team from San Antonio.
they are right. Yeah. Fifteen to five would give them fifty with mm -hmm. three match wins. So. Buckle up, folks. Could be it right here. David Cantu. Got it. He did. That is it, folks. That was a fun match, though. The first two were incredible. What close matches and comebacks and all that. And then... The team from San Antonio is victorious. Congratulations to Rick's Mo Betta team. They are the 2020-2021 Nine Ball World Champions. Congratulations to them. You can see the celebrating there. Hugs, high fives all around. Job well done by them. Shorty's Billiards is going to come over and Congratulate their opponents on a great tournament. Shorty's Billiards finishing as runners up in this event, taking home 15,000. Rick's Mo Betta team, they're taking home 30,000. We're going to see if we can't get a word in with a member of Rick's Mo Betta team. It's going to grab the mic, and we're going to turn things over to Casey on the floor. Awesome. Hey guys, I'm Casey and we are here with the Nine Ball World Champions. This is Rick, captain of the team. How has it felt that you guys just won Nine Ball World Champions? Has it truly sunk in yet? Not yet. <laughs> not yet? It's, not yet, but it's, it's a lot of work. I tell you what, these, they kept fighting back and forth. Does this help us sink in? As, as captain of this amazing team, how does it feel to lead your team here? Oh, it, it's crazy. We, we should have got eliminated several times, but we're down to by one ball. So, uh, back then, we should have been three times we should have been out, and yeah. here we are. It just took, they never give up, these guys. Yep. Amazing. So what has been your biggest challenge making it this far? <laughs> go ahead. Y'all go ahead and answer what y'all say. The ups and downs. There's up one player, the other player. Right. It's been. And, and, and none of us could be in sync. It's took yeah. a, it's, no, a team. It took, it took the whole team to stick together, and that's why we're here. One struggle, the other one picked up. We never gave up. We were down completely by tons of points, and we came back and fought back. And vice versa, so we we were here, so we were amazing. We were hungry. Good. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> so you guys have been playing for three years now together. What yes. inspired you to uh, to create your team, and how long have you guys been playing pool just collectively? Well, we we've had this team actually. For, we've been together to, oh, COVID because of COVID. We had to COVID. turn around and we had the team we had for two years that, together, and we stuck together, and um, and it, it took. I guess it, it was a good thing, maybe bad for that, but you know, we're, it made us what we are right now. So. Yes. And we just, you know, by, by well, the line, we stick together. The bond is years. We've been together for 30 years. 30 years. 30, 30 years. years. Yeah. Wow. We, we, we were 17 when we met. That's we're right. Like family. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Truly yeah. like family have, here. I have my son and my wife on the team, so. Truly really family yeah. down here. Yeah. Awesome. So um, do you guys have any tips for beginning billiards players now that you are world champions? Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. makes perfect. Stay, yes. stay down. Stay patient. And, and listen to the people that tr always take advice. Never, people t tend to know it already. You gotta sink it in and always take advice. Never say fabulous, you know it. That's right. Fabulous. So, any shout outs that you guys would like to give to anyone watching at home? Shout outs to Philly boys. To my mom. Hey, my, hey, 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 my mom's watching TV. <laughs> my mom's been watching us nervous from home. The Bronx. The Bronx. Yeah. Anybody else? My mom, my kids, everybody. Everybody's my watching. Who's watching? Sure. My fiance, my, my kids. We're, we're coming, coming home. home. Champions, we're bringing baby. home the kids. We're bringing home the kids. Awesome. <laughs> We did it! Yeah. 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 An exciting bunch of people here. Awesome. We have our supporters back here. Well, congratulations again, guys. Thank you so much for competing. And uh, back to you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. All right, folks. What a way to wrap things up here at the APA World Champions. Uh, nine ball out of San Antonio, Texas. Rick's Mo Betta team. Congratulations to them.
Congratulations to our runners-up shorties, Billiards, out of Hazelhurst, Georgia. And, Ava, congratulations to all the teams that were able to get out here and right. be part of the 2020-2021 World Championships. It was a long time coming with, with what COVID presented us, but we made it here. Uh, it was a great event, as always, and uh, it's time to go home. It's time to go, to go home. home. So All good things come to an end. Uh, that they do. So, folks, we appreciate you tuning in on behalf of Ava, myself, all of the APA. We certainly appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully in the very near future.